we are. <laughs> oh yeah, now we are live. Hi everybody. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. So welcome back online with the pros, and today is me, um, Brando, with the whole group of uh, conductors here, the very refined and the fantastic conductors of uh, all the band directors. Uh, we call them the band directors. Uh, but prior to this, uh, before we went live, uh, we were just chatting about how what Elvin has been cooking uh, and uh, sharing about his uh, wonderful chef story with all of us. Uh, very good. Elvin, you want to share something before we even start? Uh, I'm not a chef. Wilson is the chef. He's the all real right. Okay, so I, I will, we will not we will not go into the introduction uh, like what well, because we already done that uh, thanks to Sean Sean uh, thank you for for uh, host uh, for actually going hosting that uh, last week and uh, we had a very good introduction from all of them I believe uh, you don't want to hear the introduction anymore uh, no I'm just kidding they are, they are very important <laughs> as, and then today we are going to start on uh, conducting techniques and to uh, before we even embark on that uh, fully. Uh, we actually had a discussion and we we did say that, you know, please feel free to ask more questions so that, you know, if there's any burning questions from, from the public who is watching us right now, all right, we can then address it. Uh, we can get maybe Francis to do some demo. Uh, you see his face just now so happy. And then we can get Elvin to do some demo and then we can get Wilson to do some demo, right? Okay, so before we even go to that uh, technical part of it, we would like to talk a little bit about the soul page. So I think that uh, yes, last week we we we, we did have, have a lot of discussion about you know you know, you should be able to listen, you should be able to sing, you should be able to hear. So I, I would like to uh, uh, get all the conductors right now in front of all of you, okay, to talk a little bit about you know soul page about listening about singing and what do you practice on yourself right behind the scene? Can you share with us, please? Anyone want to go first? I I, I know last week you know you're pointing at uh, maybe I'll. I'll Francis, go first. I go first? No. Actually, you know what? Wilson Wilson is the expert in so <laughs> Okay, Wilson. In fact, you know why? Because because Wilson Wilson did a did a wonderful job at uh you know uh we bus have a SL workshop out. Uh, we call it the Youth Arts Leaders Conference. And Wilson did a fantastic job at uh that conference uh, doing a class call. Uh what is it called? So page 101 or year training essentials for the section leaders. Something like that. Something okay, like that, so yes. So over, that, to, over there to Wilson awesome. right now, do you go so page 202? Let's list the names. 101, 202. No, I think for me, I think Sofage is very, very important as a, as a tool for learning music. I think in primary school right now, is used quite often, you know, uh, but that's, that's another form of Sofage where there's a fixed dough kind of a fixed dough but on concert B flat so uh, that's that's happening i think in many primary schools it's a fast way of learning uh, you translate that into secondary school you know some schools they do it some uh, some don't uh, but uh, to me any form is good uh, you just it helps you uh, with with things like memorizing pieces because you know you can sing uh, a piece in so so fetch but it's very difficult to 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 you know use letters and everything. Like if you're talking about right or spring, do si do si so mi si la do si la re so la do si. It's easy to remember that in in solfege. I think many of us who went to music school, you know, we go crazy over over this this uh, lick. So yeah, until now I still remember. And I think when I first learned it, it was maybe two thousand and four something like that. Yeah. So uh, it's very good for 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 learning. Uh, music is very good for if you are talking about to add the rhythmic articulation part of it. So you actually have an internal pulse. Da, uh, uh, da, da, uh, uh. So uh, what, what Solfage actually does for musicians is it makes us a lot more dependable. Uh, okay, so on, on that note, uh, Wilson, I'm just going to mm. interrupt you here. So mm. I, I know that, I mean, the, definitely we know that it's a very important and, and I know that uh, a, a lot of band directors would like to know behind the scene what can they do to practice you know, themselves as a band director, you know, like what you just said, you know, you went to, uh, you, you went to this uh, music school and then you, you know, you're forced to keep doing it, doing it. So maybe some simple exercises, we're not going to do like 10 minutes on that, but mm -hmm. maybe less less than that to show us. There is a, a book called Bona, B-O-N-A. It's a very old book, Italian, Italian book. I think you can even download it, but it okay. comes in different clefs. So I think that's, that's very good. And then there's another one that is uh, Dandalo. Dandalo also, it teaches you all the different clefs. I think most of us uh, already kind of know, you know, because 
as conductors, you, you, you need to know your transpositions very well. And when you skip lines, it, it automatically goes there. So I think uh, Bona and Dandolo, these two are very, very good exercises to do. Even without, you can practice without uh, any, uh, any, uh, any pitch. Uh, you mind if I share a screen with you? No, 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 we don't okay, mind. Okay, just let me look at this. Okay. Uh, so right now I have this singing example. Uh, number one. Okay, you can go uh, do re mi fa sol la si do re mi fa sol la si do re, or you can just actually think about this uh, without pitch do re mi fa sol la si 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 do re mi fa. It just helps you with all these pitches. You know, um, things like number three when you have do re mi fa re, you can actually have the rhythmic articulation, making sure that you know the the smallest. Uh, divide is the quaver, so you can go do, o, o, re, mi, e, e, fa, re. So it actually helps you uh, in, in this aspect. So I think if you can just pick up any piece uh, that, that you're working with and actually, uh, you know, sing it, you know, in solfege, whichever one you want to be do, it's up to you. But it really helps you with uh, actually developing a concept of the music. So on the same note, Wilson, do you? I mean, I see the you know keyboard beside you. Definitely, you need a keyboard as a reference pitch, right? To, to start, you know, before before even do that, right? Yes, definitely. But there's no power. <laughs> 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 but actually, you don't really need a a, a a a physical keyboard or piano. You have piano apps on your phone that you can actually download. So that's that's great as well. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Elvin shared last week. Uh, when he said that you know he was traveling from one place to another, you know, inside the car, you know, he would take the piano on his phone and he start pressing, and then he start doing his uh, sight singing and all that. I think that that's a that's a reinforcement of what we did last week. Any any more you want to share, Adrian? You want to share something about you know singing? Actually, uh, I do a little bit. Of, I do use singing quite a bit in my bands as well. And how do I? Why why do I think it's always important that we as musicians, regardless whatever instrument you play, you sing because because um, knowing intervals, for example, the do you you got to know the the distance between one note to the other note. It, otherwise, how are you going? It's like it's like shooting an arrow without aiming. If you can think of the interval before it happens. And that's like aiming and before you shoot the arrow because otherwise you're just shooting blind and you're just hoping that it hits, you know. So um and and so in terms of warm-up exercises, I also do slow pitch exercises with my bands. They I mean, they always find it very funny and I I I use this I, I use this opportunity to share a silly song. I think my students I always use I always I always teach for a student, this silly song, how to memorize. So, do, so imagine your door is at your belly button. The door at the rooftop, me is flat, far with your thumbs down, so like a gate, la like a monster, because you do this. T points up to do. And what does, I mean, it's a song, and then you come down. Do, 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 T points up, la like a monster, so like a gate, far, so on, so forth. What does these actions actually tell you? You know, okay, so because, for example, if you're in court, do, me is flat, so it's slightly sharp. Do, re, re is slightly sharp, la is flat, t, you point up to the do. So if you can identify the chord, so for example, trombone section, if you have a do, mi, la, do, mi, la chord, for example, or a one, three, six in this case, you know how to, um, you, you, you know that if I'm the bass trombone, I play the, I play the C. Second trombone plays the E, for example, so I know that I can flatten. The la also has to flatten. How much you find out you, you can tune slowly, but at least you have a general direction of where where in the part of the chord you are and how to go. You know, that's that's just one thing that I use with my bands also. And also for oral training. So we all do I, I do this, you know, and then they will sing along and then I split into two groups. They they follow, they follow that kind of thing. They just so we all have fun together down there. So I think it's great as part of oral training. Fantastic. I think on that note, uh, I think we all can actually have a sofage lesson, you know, if, we, if you're really uh, interested, you know, we can think about uh, in-depth sofage sharing with everyone and then uh, we can then lock on as a special. Uh, Francis just got disconnected and then now uh, Francis is coming back on. All right, everybody, welcome Francis back to the room again. <laughs> uh, sorry guys, first casual. <laughs> We are excited to have you back again. Uh, All right, man. Uh, Francis, he, welcome he, he back. Doesn't, oh, God, he doesn't, doesn't agree, agree with what I said. No, I think it was my singing. I was still bragging to my wife that our internet connection is fantastic with us. Thanks, Star, for this. Like, look, look. 
โอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ
um, really improve on our sophage. I mean, I'm I'm not great in sophage, but uh, when I went to school, uh, I was taught numbers numbers even when I was in university. And and um, my school surprisingly every rehearsal, very bad rehearsal, the the conductor would make us sing this one three five four three two one seven one five one, and they keep saying keep the tonic, keep the key, keep the tonic, keep the tonic. Yeah. So that you get a good sense of where the key is going and where the notes are going in terms of the key. And I think that's very helpful. So if we can start the band rehearsal, I suppose, uh, with some kind of exercises that will reinforce the tonic of the, of the piece that we're going to work on. Uh, for instance, let's say we work on the whole stress suite in E flat. The E flat is the key, right? So we sing in E flat, one, three, five, four, three, two, one, seven, one, five, one, and keep the E flat really strong in our mind so that even if we transpose, we move to the minor key, we know exactly how far we are. So, so I think I think in terms of intonation, everybody's closer to the key. Um, I, I suppose we can clean up intonation by 20%. I, I don't know. Uh, but I've got a little bit of success there. But I think Alvin and Adrian and Wilson, even Mr. Tan, Randall Tan, <laughs> a lot more success than me. <laughs> but that, I think, I think uh, on that note, uh, Francis, I think you did a very good sharing. You actually, uh, actually did a very good sharing that you know a lot of uh, students are too shy to to sing. You know, uh, maybe you can start with numbers. I think that that is something that you really put through a different angle. And some of band directors maybe pulling their hair and say, "Wow, you want my student to start singing?" I think I don't think that they would do it. You know, so this is something that are uh, great. I think Francis, this is <coughs> an in-depth discussion. Uh, you know, sharing about singing. I think this is really good. All right. <laughs> and on that note, uh, I think on a side note, someone actually just typed something very interesting. Very interesting. I'd just like to ask all of you: Is conducting best done with a baton or without a baton? And uh, which situation is best? I think uh, we can talk about this for the next one hour. No, I'm just kidding. Let's <laughs> let's let's make this about this part. Okay. Let's. What I mean, there are many different school of thoughts. I believe that all of you will share about it. So maybe uh, just to uh. uh Actually, uh, Brand this is your Brandon Brenda Lee, who just uh just just uh, shared with us a question. Go ahead, any one of you can take it. <laughs> I knew I, that I knew that was coming. Okay, Adrian, go. Uh, <laughs> I I do both, and I I realize actually I prefer to actually I. I, I'm still half-hearted on it because I, I generally like to I, I like to do without. And and why do I do without sometimes? I mean, when the group is but I only do without when the group is uh fully functional on their own. They don't need strong cues, they don't need any they don't need to be to be I they don't need very how do I say what's the word for that? But but they don't need uh super the beat. clear beats. Uh. Yeah, they don't need me to keep beating and that kind of stuff. So that I can just just do all my shapes and stuff like that with them, because I I like to I, I always think of uh, music as a paint as a paint as a paint. So during the course of the performance, I'm just painting this picture right in front of me. Actually, we, but I find that for fast pieces, for fast pieces, I prefer to use a baton because actually, you know, they always say that the the baton is an extension from your heart and everything that kind of stuff. So actually, it with the if I use a baton, you know, I, I'm only I can just move this. I use lesser energy. Without a baton, I have to do a bit more, just to be clear. So when it's fast music, actually I use I prefer to use a baton because it's just clearer and lesser energy. If you have to conduct quite long with uh without a baton, it can get quite tiring. It can get quite tiring down there. So uh for slow pieces or or pieces, I mean even if it's fast and I can go in one I will go without the tone. If I need to keep beating, if there's something that I need to keep beating fast, like maybe like the Suvias, you know, things things like that where or mixed meter stuff, where you need to be clear, dry, you need to show dry beating, that's where I'll use a baton. But generally I prefer to go without. Okay, very good. <clears throat> we got that. Now, I, I, we will not actually go through the, the all four of you to comment on that. I think that uh, if we're going to do that, it really, you know, we, we're going to eat up a lot of time. All right, so maybe we have one more person, you know, um, Elvin, you want to share something about, you know, whether you like to do it with baton or without baton? Um, generally, I use the baton more often. But um, my suggestion for people out there is to do what you think is the most comfortable for you. 
um, I mean, Adrian covered uh, it really bad, uh, really well because um, you get a lot of clarity by by making the tip of the baton work for you because all the energies from people right at the back, you know, they get to see the tip and everything becomes a lot clearer um, in fast music. But uh, there are many people who try to work with a baton and they maybe they are not yet ready or especially for that particular piece of music, it's not inside yet. And then it becomes counterproductive. So I, I really think um, this is a per personal preference and whichever way that connects you to the sound best. I, I don't think you should say I must use a baton or I must use hands. But okay, as, a starting, something? as a starting point for young conductors, I would propose to use a baton because you don't know what to do with your hands yet. So you, if you know for the for the lack of a better you, because your right hand you're, you're still clueless what to do with your right hand yeah you can show your left hand and stuff like that but right hand you know what to do when you don't have a stick so actually the stick helps you focuses you know you focus you focus your energy down there on the tip so if you don't know what to do if you're starting I would say get a stick it's only it's actually harder to go without the tone so. It Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, all right? Get a baton and not a drumstick, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, I good. Mean, this, this oh, no, 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 no. Some, some great conductors use two sticks. So, baton or not, you no, know, it just got to work, right? When you get there, you can use anything. <laughs> <laughs> when you have that kind of musicians, you can use anything. That's a that's a good point, Francis. That's a good point. You know, toothpick, your know, drumstick. You know, use your eyebrow. We 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 saw that before, right? Use your face, right? Interesting. All right, now uh, we we got another question from I, Linda. Sorry, I think sorry, I'm gonna. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry Adrian. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I, I just want to. Uh, sorry, I got a lot of things. Uh, but for S. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> for section leaders, for students, uh, oh. you may ask, "Hey, I don't have a baton. Then how do I conduct? Should I conduct? Should I hit the drumstick or should I clap?" Um, I would encourage all of you, if you can, to learn some conducting because you are doing your band director a favor. If you are holding clapping, I mean, of course, at the beginning you need to get things together. You can clap. You want to use, if you want to, if you want to use a stick, which, uh, which I would, I mean, if to get things together, if you really need it, you know, go for it. But in the long run, uh, I would still encourage all all student leaders to practice conducting because you're doing a band director a favor. What do I mean by that? If you're holding, if you, if you're going to go by aud, um, aud, audio, you know, audio cues, your section mates are going to function totally by audio cues. If you're making them watch you, no matter whether you're a good conductor or bad conductor, you just conduct, make them sensitize you to, sensitize to being, responding to visual cues instead of audio cues. You know, I think you're doing a band director a, a, a lot of help as well. Mm. Got it. Okay, so on the, on, on another note, um, someone actually like uh, Linda who just uh, wrote wrote to us and just said that, hey, what about movable doors and fixed doors? Wilson, you got something to comment on that? So many times, you know, people sing in B flat and they get so confused, you know, it come from a horn player so you can understand why. So yes. Wilson, over to you. Uh, very simple, whatever works. I mean, in in the uh, let's let's be realistic at, uh, from a band director's point 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 of view. For me, I'm not out there to churn professional musicians, so I'm there to teach a band at primary school, secondary school, JC level. If the student so chooses to want to to develop further, they will they will make that 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 leap of going from, you know fixed door on on to C. You know, yeah. So I think whatever works at that level. Of course, within an orchestra setting, you cannot tell the uh, ask the violinist, "Oh, this one, can you please play do and expect a B flag? They're gonna, yeah, they're, they're gonna scream at you. But, uh, it, but in just in context of, of being a band director, whatever works. Fantastic. So on that note, I think I hope I answered two of the questions that just came in, and uh, we are on we are on task now. Of course, uh, we last we we talk about uh conducting in the earlier part, but I think there's something that's quite burning for a lot of band directors is about repertoire. And we are talking about wind band repertoire. And then uh, today, I hope that we dis dis discuss about wind band repertoire with all the people here, because uh, does wind band repertoire affects the entire band program? And if you do plan for wind band repertoires, you know what kind of you know what 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 will you recommend? 
and uh, is is uh, is Singapore too Japanese? Uh, you know, composer centric. So something all, all we we need to discuss uh, uh, in this line, and I hope that you you can actually share with us some programming for beginner band, uh, programming for secondary and JC band, for university band, and of course uh, all of you conducts a community band. So um, start with Francis, right, Francis? You didn't talk a lot just now, so it's your turn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, that's a lot of that's a lot of question, man. Um, uh, so your question is how? What was the question again? How well, uh, programming for <laughs> beginner band? I mean, what would you recommend for programming for beginner band for secondary school? <laughs> you don't need to answer all, but I mean, okay, uh, what's a what, thesis what do you... by itself? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I suppose. Uh, I suppose if we go into this, and now, uh. I mean, there's so much music out there. You know, the good thing about band, uh, the band movement is we've got so much music uh, compared to the, the rest of the art form. I, I suppose every month we have like new music churn out in Japan, in um, Europe, in America. So we have just, we have no lack of new music. But uh, I think it's important for band directors to find the kind of music that will uh, suit the band. But on top of that, something... Uh, I, I suppose we, we call it quality music, you know, uh, and what is quality music? Uh, I, I can only say, you know, uh, quality music means uh, it's got to be a piece of music that has got a lot to say, to have something profound to say, so that you as a band director can take that piece and, and um, you know, and work with your, your kids. Not just the technical part of it, but the, the extra, music, extra musical part of it, uh, what the music is about and uh, how does it connect to our humanness, humanity. So years ago, I came across this fantastic piece of uh, beginner band music. Okay, some people will say maybe it's not beginner band. I would say maybe beginner to intermediate that, that level or a beginner for a beginner band. Uh, it's uh, by Anne McGinty. It's called The Red Balloon. Yeah, it's only a two two minute three minute piece, uh, but it talks about it talks about this red balloon that you see, and and why is there a red balloon? What happened to the red balloon? How did it get there? Why is it red? And and in the two and a half minutes, the kids got to talk about the that red balloon, and I thought the music was uh, was fantastically fantastically craft crafted uh, to make uh, kids talk about the the music. And, and it's a wonderful journey, you know, if you spend, you know, especially the beginning kids, like 13, 13 year old, 14 year olds, and you, you spend that time working with them and, and how to craft an interpretation, something that they, they, is personal to them. I, I think that that will work. So I, I suppose, uh, you know, I cannot name you a lot of pieces, but sure. I would say find, find the pieces that you can connect with the kids the most and you have something profound to say about the, the music. And uh, of course, on top of that, you know, beginner band, we've got to work on a technique, uh, you know, pieces that will improve the technique and, and, and all that. Um, so I suppose I covered the beginner band part, but my dear colleagues can cover the secondary school and JC part. <laughs> I, can I okay, jump Adrian in on is the, going beginner to cover? Band? the beginner band? I, I think, I mean, like, I'm sure we know that there are tons of grade one and grade two music, but, uh, but there are, there are largely foreign base. I am really hoping, and this is a call to all composers, I hope you, I hope you can think about, <clears throat> I mean, uh, writing music for beginner band as well, because, you know, I, I, I look at Chinese orchestra, I look at choirs, there are a lot of songs that are very Singaporean, that are very Asian, but I think, and, and we can, and they use that material to teach beginners, but I, I can hardly find enough material to teach our local, uh, uh, our local set ones, for example, our folk songs, you know, a simplified version just to get things going. I mean, I, and, and maybe with, and, and maybe with some kind of a textbook with, by right, you can, you can put at the side, you know, we're, we're going through, we're going through what kind of chords now we're in this key, we're going to modulate into this key, a little bit of textbook at, material at the site so that you know you can also we can also drive the students to notice certain things as, as we as we as the piece goes along i think there's something that we're lacking you know there are tons of great one and great two music you can choose anything to teach technique and and and, and you can still learn the same, you can still get the same objectives but i think 
we're lacking in we're a little bit lacking in this department. I mean, correct me if I'm can wrong. I, can I pluck something right now? Actually, sure. for the past one year, I've been working on a book mm. for for beginner band. So I'm hoping to get it published maybe by by the end of the year. So it is all uh, dealing with uh, local local tunes, uh, Southeast Asian tunes, such that uh, you know it. Hopefully, this this can go go out to other countries in Southeast Asia. So, you know, it it will be quite cool if a if a band in in Thailand is actually playing Zubir Syed. You know, that's that's one form of musical diplomacy yeah. that I don't think our our politicians will will, will be able to to, to achieve. Even you not know, so even our kids, they understand each other's culture. So I mean, I try not to be so lazy. So I'm I'm really trying uh, working quite hard on that. So yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll let you guys. Yeah, know. this is great, and I'll be the first one to buy it. From <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I mean, we are learning for all of us to embark on. Yeah, I mean, nothing against the American stuff, but why do we need to learn so much about America? <laughs> exactly. Like, why do we need to know so much about mm. America for, you know? Mm. Yes. So, no, Chan so Mali Chan is so some, teaches you some, the like, uh, four notes. So fantastic. So some promotion right now, uh, you know, remember to uh, PM Wilson end of this year to make sure that he embark on this uh, journey to actually get some uh, local exercises published. All right. Elvin, anything to add on to the last, the, the, the part? Or um, about uh, well, I think um, you post a very interesting comment just now about um, like, is the Singapore band movement too Japanese oriented in terms of choosing the music? You know, I've thought about this myself. Um, there is a reason why so many bands choose popular Japanese composers. I mean, one of them, as we know, is Satoshi. And I, I mean, I, 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 I find myself asking this, you know, the same question, why do the students like it? But it's because it's singable, it's hummable. And uh, to them, it sounds a little bit uh, like film music or soundtrack music. So I think um, it's okay to be Japanese oriented, but when it comes to programming for a concert or for a year or for a season or for set ones, I think it's really important to have a variety. It doesn't matter how difficult or how easy, but um, one, I'm a big, huge proponent of uh, pop music. I think pop music is one of the best thing to teach uh, at, from the simplest levels you know, like American pop music, like uh, publishers like Hell Leonard, to the most difficult, you know, like um, like from New Sounds in Brass, for example. I think pop music is one of those that really, you know, gets you to first be very rhythmically um, grounded. Uh, it gets you to try different like grooves, understand music from different parts of the world, Latin music, blah, 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 blah. blah. So when I plan for a concert or when I plan for a year, I make sure that the kids are exposed to pop music. They're exposed to classical music as well. They are exposed to band classics. I mean, you know, I mean, this thing about band classics is, is kind of strange because, you know, wind band is not so old. It's, we have a very short history. So yep. classics are still, you know, there are classics that are, are becoming classics. Like when we were in school, Alfred Reed was not a classic. You know, he was very new and very relevant. But now Alfred Reed is starting to look like classic, like a band classic, you know? So, yeah. uh, so, so, can, so Elvin, you can speak about your age right now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I am the youngest here. By 48. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought it's 51. Oi, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, but sorry, I mean, sorry, I mean, sorry. Okay, sorry to after you. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, Oh, I mean, if you don't mind, I think you're right. You know, um, when we were when we were young once, <laughs> we played so much band classics. I mean, I must have played like uh, the whole Spoon Suite at least thirty times, and 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 I've conducted a few times. But um, so in our time, it used to be very popular. But uh, and I'm I'm a horrible horrible person when I talk about this. Uh, but I don't conduct the Spoon Suite enough with my bands at the moment, and I I wish more younger uh, band kids can, can be exposed to the, the whole first suite, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, and there's so much, uh, actually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are a lot of uh, new arrangements uh, that can that simplifies the whole first suite or the English first song suite. Um, and even young bands can play it now, mm -hmm. you know, and we still can teach it. I think one of the reasons why all of us actually played so much of the first suite back then is because back then there was really only that much selection that we had. So, 
yeah, I mean, the, the, the selection is really, really varied right now. So I think as band directors, you know, I believe more, most of us have less time as well. So we really need to think really, really hard on, on, on what is the kind of repertoire we can uh, really work with our, our, our students, also dependent on the, their ability as well. And I, yeah. I, I would suggest an interesting way to look at it when it comes to programming, uh, to look forward in terms of what's new, what came out this year, or what is the kind of sound bands can create 10 years down the road, but at the same time to also look backwards, to look at what is becoming classic, or what, what kind of literature are we losing in Singapore. And of course, Adrian made the, the, the best comment, local music. I think that's, that's, that's something that was really, at all levels, you know, not only beginning, beginning uh, music, uh, I mean, young band music, but at all levels. Fantastic. So I think that, you know, to wrap up this uh, part of the wind band quality, wind band repertoire, like what you, all of you just suggested and said, you know, not only to program uh, new music, make sure that you have a standard classic in your in your repertoire selection and make sure that you have local composers inside your repertoire selection and make sure when you actually uh, write uh, uh, select something is lyrical like what Elvin said why you know the Japanese uh, repertoire seems to be more popular because it, it has some lyrical part of it so it can connect with the students so with this I hope that you wrap up some of those quality wind band repertoire of course again you know we can also talk in depth about all this but uh, we don't have much time and someone actually suggested this you know how about putting big band repertoire inside? You know, is it is it uh, interesting? Big band, big band. I think it's to not not talking about a Glenn Miller big band things, but it's about um, uh, you know, a size wind orchestra versus wind ensemble kind of thing. Yeah, what are your thoughts between having a big band with mixed ability of players mm. versus big bands of different levels of different playing different repertoire? I face that really, really in, in my community bands, in my youth bands, in also in my schools. So therefore, really, if I think uh, one one thing I I, I I I was taught is if you look at the score, then you should be able to imagine who's playing that uh, that, that student playing or that player playing. If you can't imagine that person being able to play it, then I think you have to move on to the next piece. You know? So, so Wilson, you are saying that you know uh, when you read a conduct when you read a conductor score, you mm. actually picture that this uh, your player playing behind this line that you just look at. Yes. Am I right? Yes, because I mean, um, <laughs> with my community bands, it's it's an issue of uh, inclusivity. So, if someone wants to join you, you know, I, I usually. Yeah tend not to not to turn people down so i try to include you uh so that there, there, therein lies the challenge because you have people at this this level and then you have people at this level who you know getting them reached down all the way it's also very difficult so uh trying to find that balance is is, is really really tough it's con constantly a challenge Good. but in a school setting in a school setting i mean it's unavoidable that like a sec two and a sec four will be side by side I and mean, you can't possibly have a sec 2 band a sec 3 band a sec 4 band oh, depends on the size I believe depends on the size yeah. of course but <laughs> Brando's I bands think... are huge right hey no 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 no, no. <laughs> Adrian's I bands mean, are huge 300 <laughs> gen generally I think it, it, there's still value add for a young player to sit next to an old player an uh, older player to to, to learn and to, because if you're all seat, always seated among the same kind of musicians, same level of musicians, then if you don't know anything, the next person also don't know how to help you solve them, then your learning curve is a bit slower. Lah. So if you sit next to more experienced players, there's always, I mean, they may, they may stagger behind a little bit, but I think the learning, for them, the learning is better. Okay. On, on another note, um, someone asked a very interesting question. I just, uh, what happens when a main band goal is no longer musical excellent? Can and should such a band still exist? Well, it's a very deep question, huh? I think, um, by and large, the ministry's uh, standpoint is that, you know, we are. It is an activity to, to teach uh, soft skills and you know things like um, organizational stuff. And if all these things are still in place, and it it, it still checks the boxes, it still gives uh, the the students something to remember uh, the the band, something positive to remember remember the, the, the CCA times. Then I think it's fine. I mean, my band when I was young was wasn't doing much great things musically. We were playing a lot of basketball uh, but 
<laughs> you know, but we, we, we were still playing, we, we were get, getting to, and, and even right now, um, I not, I mean, now it's circuit breaker period, but yeah, every week I'm still Zooming them and I'm, I'm, I'm having, you know, drinks, conversations with them. And these are friends for 20 over years. So I think um, it, it still, still has a very, very deep impact on, on me growing up. Um, of course, I think um, if you're talking about musical excellence, uh, no one wants to play badly, I believe. But I think uh, in, in, in certain situations, we still believe that we are playing the best that we can. I think if that's, that's the spirit that we, we operate by, I think you know, the, the, the band is doing a good job. Definitely. I think, I think so too. So on, uh, another, on another note, uh, someone uh, also just uh, wrote in and say, what tips do you have for future local composers and conductors who are only teenagers or around their age right now? I mean, um, someone must have been inspired. And you know, after Adrian said that, you know, you must have more local music and Wilson start writing uh, a lot of local exercises. So someone must be inspired by this. So anyone want to take on this question? Just start writing. Good. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. sorry. And and, and you uh, if you're young, I mean, if you're a young composer, um, okay. If if I were to think about our local composers, there are a number of uh big big names, uh, people who can mentor, and they'll be more than happy to mentor a young person. Who who are they? Uh, I think Kelly Tang is more than happy. Um, Benjamin Yeo will be very happy to mentor somebody. Uh, even Jing Jun, you know, can mentor somebody. I think. If you go up, to, if you as a young composer, go up to them and say, in terms of technique, in terms of orchestration, what do I need to look out for? How can I improve my craft? I'm sure they can help you. And then hopefully uh, along the, this journey, you'll find your own voice and then you'll find that in, the spark of inspiration and then you can create something uh, that is of your own. Um, but it's very important to always find a teacher uh, that can help you, uh, they help you grow your technique uh, along the way. Um, unless you're extremely talented. I, I, met, I met kids uh, who are extremely talented and they can just write, you know, uh, and, and that's, uh, I suppose that's different. But even for them, I think they need somebody to kind of guide them along. So what's my advice? My advice is go and look for people like Benjamin Yo, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and harass him. Uh, yeah, I get him to you know, get get help. You know. Yeah, I think I think this is a very important point because uh, today when we had a lot of uh, online with the pros and a lot of uh, these uh, professionals and uh, musicians, they are always talking about um, getting some. They they more they, they actually listen to someone and they got very inspired by that someone and therefore they are embarking on this musical journey. So I think as as a teenager, I think Francis, you are really emphasizing the fact that you know you really need to get a good mentor. And with that mentor, then can you know you can progress and go further. And uh, like what Wilson just just uh, shared with us, you know, please start writing and then don't stop writing. Even if something that is not so fantastic, just go keep writing. And the more you write, the better you will get. Am I right to say that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, can I get back to the previous previous question? And I'm gonna take on the role of the moderator now. Okay. <laughs> you what? know, my, because because earlier earlier on in my career, I was quite I was, I was quite inspired and. Um, and I always been thinking about this, but when I met Brando for the first time, I mean not for the first time. I said when we had some exchanges and he was sharing about uh, teaching hey, band. Uh, and Francis, it, I just told you for the first time today. Hi, Francis. <laughs> nice meeting you. Yeah, he 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 told me. I mean, Brando, you told me right. You told me that uh, that you never cut players in your band. You don't believe in cutting players. In fact, every single player, even if you have a two hundred band, two hundred uh, member band, they're gonna go up and they're gonna play exactly what is on the score. So, so I, and, and I, I, you know, as a young director, I've always find that to be quite, uh, quite, quite ambitious and always a, a challenge. So I'm interested to hear about your strategies and what is your philosophy and whoa, how, how do you do it with the bands? Because I can see very different, it's very, very different from us. Francis, firstly, I'm not that old, okay? Just want to make sure that I clarify that I'm not that old, okay? Now, I, I, okay, let, let me just share something. Um, uh, I, I've been band directing for eight, 18 years and some of the, some, I, I mean, I've done a many, many concerts and many, many performances together, like what Francis said. And most of the time, my bands are really, I mean, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very lucky and very fortunate. I have uh, bands that are 60 and above. And a lot of times, you know, um, 
when it's 60 and above, you know, we tend to get a lot of, uh, you know, sound. So I think I go back to the concept of, uh, you know, like what Wilson shared earlier about being very inclusive. I always have that philosophy in my in my uh, teaching. Of course, uh, I, as a conductor, we, we must, uh, of course, uh, make sure that we write simply. Let's say, for example, if I have someone who is a trumpeter who could not actually play, you know, I would not say, uh, please don't uh, play this part, uh, but I'll simplify it a little bit so that, you know, she or, or, or he would, would feel that, you know, it's still in, I, I, I will still be part of that melody line. And of course, if really, I mean, there, there's a tone difference or there is a, uh, that, that, there is a intonation uh, clashes and all that, uh, then we really will have to fix that. I mean, that is the details that we have to go into. But uh, again, uh, I think we go back to the fundamentals that, you know, band is actually a CCA in school. You know, and uh, if it's banned as this year in school, we really want to make sure that we give the musical experience and the musical expression to the students and make sure that the students actually remember that the musical expression and the experience is more most important. Of course, accuracy is one of the one 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 of that. You know, if without accuracy, I mean really, I mean if you don't want to hear a band that is really out tune, that's the absolute truth as well. You know, so basically we, we try to do everything almost to 90%. And that's 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 my formula, and that's that's my philosophy, and that's my principle that I've been guiding myself from the beginning to the end. Thanks, Francis, for the question. But I'm really not old. <laughs> but I, I believe that I believe that as every uh, band conductors uh, will face the same uh, dilemma. I think uh, when it comes to a certain uh, festivals, or when it comes to a certain uh, serious uh, concerts, or or, or something, uh, people will say that you know it it, it is important to. Uh, to actually uh, play a lot more accurate and all that. I mean, when when that comes, I think that uh, I I learned something. I, I learned something really well in my JC part of my teaching. I think um, JC is one of the place that you know is a one year three months program. And when it's a one year three months program, you especially we get a lot of people coming from different schools. You know, and when they're coming from different schools, I really think about uh, breaking smaller groups and really go into the details about working with them. And uh, in fact. This, this is a very, uh, the JC taught, taught me a lot about detail planning, about every second counts, because if let's say, for example, if we do actually uh, uh, delay our planning in our uh, rehearsal, we do, have, we, we do have a deadline to meet and that deadline will, will just be gone. And so we, you must every week, after you finish a rehearsal, you're already planning what you're going to do for the next rehearsal and make sure that, you know, all the problems that you hear is really solved. And that was actually shared with all, you know, all of you shared it last week. I was listening to a recording, you know, you were all talking about it, you know, you really need to plan and you really need to write out every single thing that you hear. And like what Adrian said, you know, you have a recording, you go back and you listen to the recording and you start writing, you know, and make sure that that is executed to the section leader. So that's what I, I, I think that uh, to answer... Francis' question, even in depth, I think that's 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 something good. Am I right, Francis? Oh yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your bands were sensational, always sensational. Ah. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, okay. So I, I mean, uh, uh, another another topic that's uh, very uh, uh, important. I think we have been talking about conducting, okay. And I think that I want to hear from all of you. You know, how is that different from band writing? You know, how, how, I mean, I mean, I mean, yes, last week you were all sharing about, I mean, yes, you want to be a conductor, you got to do, uh, you got to be really good uh, instrumentalist, you got to be listening, of course, you, you have all that. But how about band directing? What attribute or what kind of character, you know, you need to have to be a band director? That's something that I think that uh, were, Elvin, you have been very quiet. So maybe to you, Elvin. Well, I, I guess it's, it's, um, it's a different ball game altogether. Um, in, in, a, in a way, a band director is always walking a tight rope of balance. Um, you'll, you have to make decisions where every student in the band gets a good experience, uh, improves. Um, at the same time, you will have to uh, take into consideration uh, their academics. That is something that I think about all the time, you know, if, if there is going to be more than two times a week, uh, when, can it, when can we do it, you know, how do we communicate with parents, that's, that's a big thing, communication with parents, uh, and very often in Singapore, we are not allowed to, most band directors, I believe, we are not allowed to communicate with parents straight away, so it's through the teachers, it's through the HOD, uh, but the teachers and the HOD, they can't, really represent what is going on in the band program because they, they, it's not their expertise. So therefore, then you become the bridge. You become the bridge to the band 
uh, teacher or HOD, uh, and that communication through the teacher goes to the parents. Um, also, sometimes in, in, in band directing, uh, you've got to think about uh, the problems that you face in secondary school, for example, or in JC, it's different. You know, different students at different levels who have different problems. Like the, the, the question that uh, we had a few moments ago about having a big band with, with deferring levels. So then how can I help with this issue? If I, have, uh, if I have a concert in, let's say, five months and I have very weak students and very strong students, how do I balance? What is the experience going to be for the next five months? So there's a lot of, a lot of planning. Um, Sometimes there's also a lot of accounting, like, you know, how do you um, balance your budget? You know, uh, most band directors, we have to advise our teachers uh, what to purchase, for example. You know, things as simple as, do we have enough reads till the end of the year? That's something that is small, but if as a band director, you don't plan, then when it comes to, you know, November, you realize that your clarinet players have been using reeds for six months, <laughs> the same reeds for six months. And I've seen that many times with students somehow that I've come into contact with. They don't know, or an oboe player who's using a chip reed, you know, and the oboe player doesn't know. So I think as band directors, you have to have a sense of macro, but at the same time, micro. And I'm quite OCD about micro. I, I mean, all of you know me <laughs> well enough. I, I'm really OCD about micro. So um, it's, it's a very different ball game than just studying your score and coming to rehearsal prepared. I think it's, uh, sometimes I find myself being caught up that corner more than the musical corner. Good. Anyone, anyone want to add one more person who want to comment on this again? When it comes to primary school, I think, yep. um, yeah, I must really give it to, to, to band directors like Faisal and Mr. Quack. I really don't know how they find that kind of patience because in the primary school that I teach in, you know, I'm really fortunate to have a, a good team around me, but it's sometimes it's so frustrating just getting them to a point when they are teachable. You know, so then, yeah, so that discipline. I mean, Francis has, has seen me work, work with them before. He's seen me lose my temper, you know, so many times. And sometimes I bring that temper with me when I, right after the primary school, I go to the JC and I start yelling at, at yeah. So it's, it's a, but yeah, um, you, you have that, which is, is really challenging. There's, as Elvin has already said, there, there's so many things and then you need to deal with parents sometimes. You need to deal with parents and then it's in a very indirect uh, form. On the podium, you know, um, really with, with the primary school that I, that, I, that I conduct, on the podium during a performance where, you know, my, my, my take is when I'm on the podium, it's a performance, I already given up. You know, we'll just, we'll just do we're as prepared as we can, we, we can be, and let's just show it. And I remember the very first SYF uh, I conducted for primary school. That's about 10 years ago. And, um, you know, right on stage when we were, were, were playing. And then halfway through, I felt, hey, the balance is not quite right. And this was primary school, mind you. And I felt that the cornets could, uh, could, could you know, play, play a little bit more, you know. And I just gave the cornet section one, one look and I was, as I was conducting, I just gave this and they were having their rest. The boy who was playing the lead cornet, he, was, he looked at me and he was like, and he delivered. That was like, the most professional look he, he, he ever gave to me. And yeah, it's so surprising, you know, and, and he really uh, uh, played so well that day. I was so proud of him. Of course, once he went on stage, he, he resumed to become a, a monkey. La. Yeah, it's just like that. But on stage, you'll be surprised at, at how, how this, these kids, you know, because they know everyone's looking, looking at them, you know, and, and back to, back to uh, just, just to sidetrack a little. Uh, if you want to get your, your, your band to actually play, uh, Play with better habits. Just get a photographer in the room. <laughs> Suddenly, you realize that they are they are doing. <laughs> yeah. So all Sorry, the all... Like conductors have to be photographers now. <laughs> <laughs> or you or you just tell them that uh, there's a recording session going on uh, today. Uh, although they, then the recorder guy can never come on, and then the band will always rehearse better that day, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but okay. Uh, having said that, uh, I mean, I think I think Wilson made a very good point. And when I, although he said that he lose his temper, I've never seen 
Mr. Ong lose his temper before. He's such a nice gentleman and oh, oh. a good musician <laughs> and everyone loves him, you know, you know. So don't get the wrong idea, okay? He's really, really kind and nice, uh, wonderful. Uh, I mentor. second that, I second that, okay? <laughs> I think some of my if any of my students are watching, they are they are, they just rolling in the, in in the chairs. Really. <laughs> yeah, but but am I right to say? I mean, and 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 this to all my wonderful colleagues here. Am I right to say that as as your career progresses, and I hope it means progresses, um, that the amount of conducting that you do on the podium during rehearsal is actually a lot less, and you actually do a lot more teaching, a lot more educating. Um, and I find myself hardly conducting nowadays. Uh, and the real, con- the real conducting is actually done at the dress rehearsal or the rehearsal itself. I don't know. What do my colleagues think? You can disagree, please. <laughs> please do. I think it's absolutely true. <laughs> I, and I think this happens even in professional orchestras. Yeah, at all levels. Um, <laughs> like in the first rehearsal, you don't put your everything because you have to listen, you know, you have to sort of gauge what the musicians are doing. Um, so I think this is absolutely true at all levels. <laughs> yep, I think especially in, 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 in more, more proficient groups and especially like uh, professionals, the first rehearsal I go in, I'm just like uh, I, listening a lot to see how much they can actually work without me, how redundant I actually am. And then you then then you find out okay maybe this place they need me a little bit that place they they they, they need me a little bit and then uh oh this place they don't really need me to do that clicking stuff so I can actually explore what more to give them so yeah it, it's it's always cascades yeah and, and recently level. on Facebook and recently on Facebook right I I saw I saw on Adrian's post about Lan Shui and and how wonderful a conductor he is and that he doesn't really uh. There's something about his conducting. You want to you wanna elaborate more, uh, Adrian? Because I think your style is very similar to that, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, 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 don't put me... <laughs> but, but, I mean, Lan Shui is someone I really admire. I mean, he was my boss when I was working in SSO. I mean, he was when he was the music director at SSO. Uh, and he's someone that I had a couple of lessons with as well. And he's, he's just a... I mean... I, I see conductors always as two roles, an artist and an administrator. Administrator part is where you have to plan your rehearsal order, you have to plan your everything uh, administrative wise, what you tell the office to prepare or what you tell your teacher team and your team of teammates to prepare, what you have. And, and But I feel as a conductor, we should as largely be artistic as possible. You know, So even on the podium when we're fixing things, it's all artistic. It's all so we focus on being artistic, and we try to not. Uh, we try to. Of course, we, we can't run away from it. It's, there's no running away from it. Administratively, we still have to make sure things happen. But when we're on the podium, I always try to focus on artistic matters only, and and whatever happens, I really don't care. You know, we're on the podium, it's my time with the with the ensemble in front of me, and we just fix, 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 fix fix things, nail things, make things better and make things happen. That's, and, and I think this is in a professional orchestra setting, that's the, that's the, that's the way uh, conductors also work. From nine, let's say, let's say we start with also at 9.30, you know, until, until 11 a.m. is the break. 9.30 to 11 is one and a half hours of intense rehearsal of music making. And we don't care about whatever else is happening. Earthquake can be happening outside, we don't care. We just focus on music making. After the rehearsal day, we think about all the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. I think I think uh, with that, you know, we really uh, share quite a lot about you know, uh, being a conductor. You really, I mean, on the podium, you really want to you know practice your art, and you really want to listen, and you really want to correct things, and then. Once you're out of the podium, you straight away, like what Elvin said, you could do a lot of planning and like what uh, Wilson said, you know, get very angry and then go to sec- uh, go to a JC and get angry. No, I'm just kidding, Wilson. <laughs> All right, so with that, we're gonna re- we we we're gonna give some points. Uh, I mean, we we have given a lot of points about you know band director's job. It's not only about conducting. I think uh, I think nicely, Adrian have wrapped it up that you know as a as a band director, you still need to practice your art on the podium, and that's a very important uh, thing that you need to do. Uh, on one question just came in, uh, actually not really just, but came in quite some time. What are your thoughts on your young students playing chamber music, non full band repertoire during their secondary school days? Asked by Alexander Woon. 
Horn player again. Today, Horn player is very active, very good. Anyone? <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> like, it's a complete well, silence. I, 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 okay, I think they must. They, they should. And I, I, I'm so guilty of not doing it enough. And I think, um, and bring back to the question before, right? Uh, as band directors, uh, it will be wonderful if I don't have to keep time for my ensemble and they can just keep time by themselves and, and they can express by themselves. And then I can kind of direct them in the direction that I feel the music can can get us somewhere. And I think um, when when you do chamber music, um, the there's no leader, there's no conductor. You are your own boss and you have something to say and you put it in your music yourself. And I think uh, as a musician, that's very important. Um, and And... Wonderful nowadays, uh, the, the, especially the Japanese, have so much chamber music churning out and um, and I think I'm all for it. I don't do enough of it, I'm sorry, but I'm all for it. Oh yes, Francis, we used to play a lot of chamber music together. Yes, we used to be in the same quarter at <laughs> Quintet. <laughs> any, any to, anything to add on for Elvin and Adrian? Or um, Wilson? Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a must, it's a must have. Even if it just means you you just give them the music and say, you know, if you have time, look at it, you know, but I think it's it's a must have. The thing about chamber music is that it's collaborative. Like um, Francis mentioned, you know, there is no boss. Actually, um, there is a boss at every point in time, somebody needs to make the decision that I will lead or I will follow or, so it's, it's very collaborative. And it's like, I, I find chamber music is sometimes like 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 life, you know, it's like society. When to when to do something, when to give, when to take. So I think there's a lot of values behind that, like the non-musical. Um, and sometimes, you know, when I walk into a room when somebody's doing chamber music, almost immediately you can read the room whether they are good friends or whether they have an understanding or whether the situation is tense. So it's 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 amazing. Chamber music is really amazing. I must, I must add in down here that uh, I, I try to, I mean, in secondary schools, I must admit it's a little bit harder to do chamber music because number one, if the group is not large enough and you have different, different uh, varying standards, you know, a piece, for example, a quartet, we require four similar standard people. But if you have a sec one and a sec two and a sec three and a sec four, for example, just for them, it's hard to do chamber music. There isn't music written for uh, difficult, uh, uh, a higher level melody with simple bass, for example. You know, there isn't, the melody gets passed around. So that's the little challenge that we have. So I'm, I'll be happy to hear more from Francis on what Japanese <laughs> chamber music we have, <laughs> because I, I hardly see a okay. suitable chamber music for every section for me to launch a full chamber program because I got to think of everyone. I can't just think of one person. And what if my schools don't have, a, don't have someone to guide them, you know, and, and, and we're already having difficult, I mean, it's not like we have a lot of CCA time. I, like I said, I totally agree that chamber music is important, but we don't have a lot of CCA time sometimes. So that's the challenge as well. How, how can I go and monitor one section? Because can they lead a chamber, you know, and how we can start with the right scores, with the right, there are challenges. But for example, at the higher level institutions, I do that. And for example, at Singapore Poly, you know, we still run uh, section com section competitions every year. And we always have a section champion and then the champion is get featured at the annual concert and that kind of thing. Because that's where the levels are more similar. And that's mm -hmm. where things can happen. But if it's in the secondary school, sometimes I find it a bit hard. Lah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. my personal thing. I don't know about the rest. Yeah, I think it's a challenge, you know. Um, uh, but nowadays, uh, you're very surprised, you know, there's a lot of flexible ensembles that come out from Japan and even in the US. And uh, and I, I'm such a beneficiary of that. Um, I have like, you know, you know, sometimes the senior kids like sec fours and threes, right? They're at a certain level. And then if they have to keep always playing the year twos and year ones, they always feel like, uh, like I've always held back, right? But when you say, okay, let's have a chamber program where all the year threes and year fours, you can, you, can, you can choose your own groups and find a piece. And then you will find a piece, uh, maybe a flexible ensemble. Uh, uh, and then they will, amongst their own level, they create a group. And they have so much fun with it. 
And the wonderful thing is, it doesn't have to be doing CCA time. It can be doing their own time. <laughs> say, oh, okay, we're gonna have a chamber festival. Uh, chamber festival on this day. You know, uh, come come and play something. And and um, so so I think I'm a beneficiary of uh, the wonderful work done in Japan and US. And and adding to that, I think Singapore we can do a lot more, right? With all the Singapore Singaporean materials and all that. Okay, with that, I think I think yeah. I think we, we hear each other that you know we have heard uh, the the changes that has happened over the over the years you know the the time getting lesser the activities are changing um, you know contact with students are actually uh, with getting lesser um, can you maybe I mean I think that uh, a lot of young band directors would like to hear you know through the years that you are from you know a young band director to now. Uh, middle age band director, you know what is the landscape of band has changed? You know in Singapore. I mean, I'm I'm not saying old band director, uh, please. Ah, uh, I'm just saying a young younger band director as compared to right now. Something that uh, you know, right now you're in the middle. You know, middle of your career. What do you what what do you see that uh, has changed? You know, the time of course time we all know has changed. You know, maybe you all can emphasize a little bit more and how you all better plan your rehearsal and how you all actually uh, do better together with your bands. Go ahead. Wilson, you want to start first? Me again. <laughs> yeah, I think time is... Uh, us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for time, I think uh, this, this uh, right now, without a doubt, it's a, it's a lot less with the exception of, of just a few, few programs. Uh, but I find that the quality of education is a lot better. We have tutors who are a lot better equipped. The, the young ones who are in their 20s, uh, they are really, I think, a lot more informed and, and a lot more educated than, than myself um, in, in, in this aspect. They just need just a little bit more, more experience and I think they're they going to be wonderful. Um, so that, I think, is the difference. Um, also, I think back then, we, uh, we used to have a lot more activities because of time within band. And, um, but, you know, on the flip side, right now, you have associations like BDAS and you have associations that are like, like WOBAS that are actually organizing events on themselves and they're including so many, uh, so many of, of, of our students. So it really, you know, and these, these groups are primarily run by artists and not by bureaucrats. So it really shows that, you know, how, how vibrant the, the scene can actually be, you know, with us as the drivers. So I, I think it's, it's looking good. Uh, we, we just uh, need a, a, a an attitude adjustment, you know, if we are still caught up with uh, the good old days kind of thing. Elvin, any, any, anything else to add? Yeah, I think, um, I think for a good performance, you, you, you need to have not enough time, to be honest. Uh, I, I feel that having enough time sometimes makes things, makes people a little more relaxed, a little bit more comfortable with the pace, and then maybe it, you lose the edge. Yeah, for a successful program, for a successful performance, you just need to have slightly less than enough time. So I agree with, with, with all these guys that, um, um, that I don't think we are in, a, we have gone past those good old days. I think the good old days are here and they will continue to come, you know. Adrian, you got anything to add on? I mean, yeah, lah. We can. I we will never have enough time. Man. <laughs> we can never have enough time, because because I mean, being. I think I think one 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 characteristic of a conductor is to be very OCD. Yeah. So you know, we can keep picking and picking and picking, and, and and the next rehearsal it gets unpicked, and then we can pick and pick and pick and pick again. You know the kind of thing. So it's like, it's like we're polishing something until the whole thing is super polished you know then then we might be happy but maybe we'll find another spot again but i mean it's it's just a it's just a situation that we have to deal with the, the environment is changing we just got to work with whatever we have and do our best fantastic and, okay. and I think actually you don't mind if i add a little bit more no 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 francis i don't mind man <laughs> you know i i do find that we are it's kind of two folds you know we are very fortunate i've seen the younger generation of uh, band directors like uh, you don't know, so if you don't mind like some names like Jay Yuan, Yo Yo Jay Yuan, uh, came in, uh, even Sharon, my assistant, um, and uh, Sean, of course Sean, you know, uh, Sing Hao. These people, 
there's so much energy. I've seen them like always like pushing and pushing and pushing and working. And, and that's the wonderful thing. Our, our future is these young people and they have so much energy. And as the oldies here, you know, and, and we try to keep up to the energy, right? So what, 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 what can we do? I, I suppose as we move uh, forward, um, um, don't just think of schools. I think we always think of bands from schools, right? Actually, actually, if you look at the European model, they are very community-based. Their bands are mostly community bands. They're very, very few school bands. Our model is kind of like Japanese, American. And I think um, as we, as our Singaporean society and our landscape change, right? Maybe we can think in terms of, okay, how, how, how do these young people come onto the scene instead of just working with schools, but starting building community bands, community groups, and then growing from there. I think it'd be much, more interesting than that because you know with schools you know, they will always be believe it or not you know and I you can disagree with me but they will always be thinking about academics and uh, exams and all that and then as much as we want to get away from my exams I don't think that will ever change and I think if you're always thinking about academics that's always going to hurt the arts yes. if the arts can come from the community I think it will be very very special and I think these young people need to get involved in the community start building bands I know Sean has a wonderful group in uh, Nanyang uh, with uh, the NAFA and, and, and I think the young uh, came in and Jamin is with the West Winds. I think as we move forward, let's build more community events and then let's change the scene so that uh, so that Adrian has got more bands to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Francis is on form tonight, huh? Francis, you're very on form tonight, all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> I think I think uh, it's I think it's uh, really really uh, good. I mean, we 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 talk about community events and uh, maybe Wilson, Adrian, uh, you like to share because you know Wilson is uh, conducting Musad and Adrian is conducting Pew Youth. I mean, uh, what are the challenges that you face? I mean, we 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 know that there are a lot of community events. We have uh, we have uh, uh, you know Musad, we have uh, uh, Pew Wins, we have uh, West Wins, yeah, we have. Uh, to name a lot, I mean, almost 10 community bands. I mean, how is that different I mean, as compared to, you know, secondary school, JC, university, you know, how, how is that different? I think with uh, community bands, uh, first of all, I think membership is, is, is an issue. Uh, you really need to constantly push on membership, getting people to come. And, uh, you know, and there's, you know, even I was uh, doing that when I was young, just hopping from band to band to band, just, just to, uh, you know, uh, uh, test things out. Um, but I think this phenomenon will be a, 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 a lot uh, better if we had more students you know, from secondary school looking at, at uh, a community band as, as a future. So not looking at after I take my O levels, or after I take my A levels, okay, that's it, you know. But there, there, I, as, as band directors, I think band directors out there, if you can just open up, you know, this avenue and say that, you know, after this, please go out and, and, and play for more community bands. And, you know, if they continue to, to play in community bands, you know, they're going to just uh, polish their skills. If they come back as alumni, they're, they're definitely going to be, be an asset to, 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 to your program. So uh, that, that, that's my plea to, to, uh, to, to, to the, to the uh, conductors, you know, before starting your own band, like, just try to feed it. The, the existing bands, <laughs> but um, okay. In in terms of uh, programming, also I, I find also with with community bands, um, uh, really I cannot be the, the only one calling the shots in terms of programming. I, I, I because if I I always must look at what the 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 the, the musicians want to play, because end of the day they are the ones that need to go and sell tickets. No one's gonna sell the ticket, you know, for a concert that they are playing and they are not enjoying the repertoire. So that there needs to be kind of that, that kind of balance. Also, uh, with with our as I said, being very inclusive, especially with the youth band, uh, we, we do need to manage uh, in, in terms of you no. Know, uh, so sometimes if if a player is new, I say if you're going to play for this concert, yes, please do play. Um, let me pick two pieces for you to play for this concert, and and next next concert we pick four, and then by then slowly they will they 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 should be able to play a full concert. So I think, uh, yeah, so do, do so, that. So you do include, uh, you do include uh, the members' uh, opinions about the repertoire when you when you are doing your repertoire selection. Am I right? Was yes, that? but yes, but many a time they just they 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 
want to leave it to me, but I've been telling them, please, I, I want to have a concert where I'm just told what to conduct. I mean, that, that, would, be, that would be the dream for a while. Actually, for me, uh, with Feel You, uh, because it's really community band as well, and I, I think, I mean, although we have a good database of members, so what we do before every concert is we come up with a schedule and we tell everyone that you have to hit, let us know in forecast, you know, what, what your attendance is going to be like. And if it's going to drop, if, it's, if you're going to be away, you know, or too many, too, you're going to be away too much, then we'll just say maybe you should sit out of this concert. Because, because I, think, I think we all agree that every time we have someone missing, you know, it always, it always pushes us back. So as much as possible, we always, as conductors, we always have to imagine certain people being there. You just have the sound engineer things in your head, you know, and, and maybe you will never get everyone there until the final concert sometimes. I'm not sure whether you but face in, the same problem, uh, but um, at uh, Muse Art, what I face is we, we I think, same with you, we, we streamline our rehearsal, saying this this concert, okay, I'm going to have 10 rehearsals in there. But then you have some some members that are, that are happy with it because it's efficient, but then there are some members that, you know, they ex actually, when, when there's nothing for them to do in uh, on a Sunday, then they're like, I need more stuff to do. So that's, <laughs> that's that balance. You know, they have this hardcore membership that, yeah. I don't know. I think West Winds also has a, uh, has a very good uh, following, right? The, the, the core membership is very strong. Uh, okay. May I say, you know, uh, I was a member in West Winds like 25 years ago. So I've been a member ever since, and then from tuba player, I became an uh, assistant conductor. And shout out to my West Twins folks. <laughs> uh, and I have the best boss, you know. Uh, Philip Tung is the one of the best boss you can ever have. You know, he's a great boss. He has great vision, and he's the nicest guy out there. And my uh, and our team, our ex school team, is fantastic. And uh, what I have to say about West Twins is. Um, it's truly an, a, a community band because we have like people in their 50s, 40s, 50s, I think 60s maybe, if I'm not wrong. I don't want to offend anybody, but uh, I think 40s, 50s, at least 40s, 50s. And then we have kids coming in in 16, 17, coming into the band. And then they're like, oh, wow, all these old people, right? Old folks, right? And, 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 and not only they learn about the music, but they also learn about life and, and these older folks actually guide them along and and actually, some of my, some of the members actually found jobs, working for some of these members. You know, so it's, it's quite funny. Uh, and um, I think we have a quite a wonderful ecosystem in, in West Winds. And uh, I don't want to brag about it, but you know, every time I'm going to rehearsals, I just enjoy the atmosphere. We have fantastic ESCO, fantastic boss, fantastic people, great community here. Uh, and I think. Every community band can be like that. Uh, of course, you know, West Winds when in the early years was very, very tough. I mean, we worked very hard and we have membership issues and all that. Uh, but over the years, it got better. And then the, the younger members become older and then they take over the ex, uh, as uh, ex-school committee members. And, and I think uh, things change. Now. So my, my vision is, you know, eventually we can have a, a many West Winds in Singapore, which is a great thing because we can have many, many amazing um, um, community bands. Like the Spanish people that are Spain, right? They have like so many wonderful community bands and every, any one of them are so amazing. Yeah, okay. So on that note, we, are, we, we got it. We, we, uh, we, we can hear Francis, the passion of Francis uh, talking about community bands and I'm really excited, you know, when we hear that, you know, about West Winds and all that. Now, uh, on a very important note, some someone actually, I, I know that none of you teaches marching band, but what someone actually asked a question, what do you think of the current marching band scene and is anything to, that we can do to promote marching band culture, be it traditional or emulating uh, the DCI style? Uh, any, anyone want to take this? Look at SAF band. I mean, the, uh, I, I, I mean, I was from SAF, all of us were from SAF band, but I have never been prouder of them when I saw that the video of them uh, doing that tattoo in Russia. You know, it is not DCI style, it's not traditional, it's Singapore style. You know, that's something that they, they I mean, they really got the, got the formula right. And, you know, um, I'm a big fan. So I, I think if, if the SAF band can do more to, to, to promote this, uh, it, that's going to be wonderful. But really, really guys who are from SAF band, really, really proud of the, the, the work that you've done. It, you shed, I, I shed a tear whenever I see, see that, that, that video. 
I think so, I think uh I do a bit of marching band lah. <laughs> so uh a bit like a bit. But uh I think I think it, I mean there are challenges in doing marching band. There's always space, there's always the heat, you know, that kind of thing. In Singapore it's not easy. But um but I think what we are slowly doing and working with MOE uh is or rather AEB is is doing bringing the bringing certain elements of that on stage, you know. So we call this show band. So instead of going out into the field doing huge formations and stuff like that, you know, we can start thinking of how to present piece on stage with movement. It's all music and movement. And I think, I mean, maybe we can't do the color guards and all that, all that fantastic formations that Tanjong Katong, uh, Bowen, uh, the Yi, uh, uh, and you know, you guys, where, where they do it. But, but I mean, even any band, I mean, with 30 membership, you just need a drum set. Your percussion can still be down there, right at the bottom of the stage. I've done such shows, and, and I think they are super. You know, for for school shows, usually the crowd knows it. You know, it's so much more interesting watching that. You can just be playing a simple pop song, all you can, and I mean, and you just add in the add in the confetti and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's usually a much visually, it's a more interesting show. And I and I would encourage you know everyone to, you know. Even for student leaders, get together. Hey, how can we do this? You know, how can we walk around? How can we dance the music, and and just have fun. It's these performances are usually much more memorable, you know, to me sometimes. Agree, agree on that. So in fact, uh, AEB and uh, BDS actually we did a, a kind of a collaboration or get students together, and then we did some uh, simple uh, teaching from. We got all the local instructor, band instructor, uh, who are marching band specialists, and then we got them to actually train. Uh, so if you are keen on that, I mean, this year maybe we not be able to do it because of the COVID nineteen. Yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, I think if you are keen, uh, please join us in that activity, and then uh, you can then contribute. I think even more. Um, then uh, someone actually asked to inquire up and about your advice on how to find a teacher and uh, how does mentorship develop? Uh, would there be any sort of payment uh, or completely voluntary on the mentor part? You know? I, if I can jump in down here, I have... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to find... Let's say you want to learn trumpet. You would find a trumpet teacher and you would pay for a trumpet teacher. Right. If you want to learn composition, please do expect that you have to find a composition teacher and pay pay the teacher duly. I mean, nothing wrong if you can tell the teacher that, uh, sir, um, I I don't I don't have that much money. Would it be possible? I think it's okay. It's perfectly okay. But or if you want to be a conductor, you can learn conducting. How can you be? How can you? I mean, it's it's. Hard to be a hard to say you want to be a conductor, but you don't attend conducting lessons. You don't attend conducting master class. So I encourage you to um, ask people. You know, if you, if you can't pay the full price, just just say just just and if that person is okay, you know, there you go. You know, but don't be shy to ask. But and don't be shy to learn. Don't be shy to learn. I think that's the most important thing. Or you can gather a group of people, and to learn as a class. Yeah. You know, I mean, be, be the administrator. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, yeah. when you're alone, you know, you're more afraid and then uh, you get a lot of people together and then maybe you can, you know, organize uh, five people to uh, ask any one of these guys here, you know, <laughs> some basic tips about being, you know, a band director and conductors. And, and uh, one, one very important question that I think that uh, some band directors would like to ask, I mean, instrumental tutors, we have been discussing last week, instrumental tutors, you know, playing your instrument well is very important. And they are very key to the success of uh, the band program. But you know that in Singapore, it's really very different. I mean, uh, we do not have, uh, not many bands have this uh, luxury of having, employing, uh, being able to employ tutors, you know, um, maybe from the ground. A any one of you have a some suggestion? I mean, every one of us came from that. You know, what did we do to uh, overcome that? And maybe you can share that with uh, some of uh, our band directors. Elvin, maybe you want to start first. Elvin, Mike, Mike, Mike. Can you hear me now? Yes. So I yeah, I'm I'm dying to 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 share about this. You know, my first experience in conducting was not a secondary school band; it was a JC band. 
and then I uh, two a couple of years later I went to a secondary school and and, uh, and um, it wasn't a strong band it was actually um, sort of a beginning band and that was the period that I learned the most not when I was conducting the JC but when I was conducting the secondary school band so I, I would say uh, and this is tied to your question about the difference between conducting and being a band director I would say. Um, as a band director, many of us, me included in some of my schools, we do not have the luxury of tutors, but we can actually learn how to teach the instruments. And uh, what do I mean by that? And I talk about this with my team of instructors all the time, that if you are a flute player, can you at least play a scale on the trumpet or on the tuba or on the percussion? Can you identify um, like simple rudiments on the drum? Um, can you troubleshoot problems like, um, like by, by, by hearing a, a sound that a student makes? Can you tell that it's the, it's the read or it's the breath or it's the amposure? So I think this idea of being able to teach instruments is really something that was a lifesaver for me. Uh, it's not easy and uh, sometimes you, you, you learn an instrument at a time or sometimes you learn, I mean, like, for example, I always tell my friends, you know, saxophone is so easy to play. <laughs> it's like, like the recorder fingering, you know. So I, I picked up the saxophone very quickly, but till today I find trumpet playing really tough for me, especially coming from a flute, flute background. So I think um, I, I, I would encourage band directors to pick up all the instruments and, and play at a, a very simple level, but that gives you the doorway into understanding the difficulties with each instrument. And then maybe there will be a less um, reliance on tutors. And just to add on to that, I think that's, that's a great suggestion. And, and just to add on to that, um, a phone call away, you're just a phone call away from a friend who knows how to play that instrument, you know what I mean? If you have an issue with uh, your student, you don't know and you don't know what to do, it's perfectly fine. I mean, we, we don't know everything, but you know, just message, take a video. Uh, they, I mean, my student is saying, no problem, what can I do? You know, mm, things like that. But of course, cover the face and PDP and all this stuff. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, what, what tutors do is, uh, at a bare minimal, is, uh, is, is time. You know, they cut down the, the, the student teacher ratio. But I find the past few months, you know, before before we had this circuit breaker and the stop of CCA, you know, we had to have team A, team B, and da 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 da. So most of the time it was actually sectionals. So I realized that, you know, yeah, uh, not having full band is actually very helpful for my bands. I will really go around and I will I will listen to every single student just for five minutes and say, okay, you need to do this. These are the lipsters you do. Da, da, da. Okay, I'll I'll see you next week. And and every single student. So I get to see at least half the band in, in one session. So, and you know, this, this five minutes, you know, a week, it really just that face-to-face -face time, you know, just at the top of my head, I will know, is it time for full band? Can the, can the band have an efficient enough full band? And at the same time, you're also teaching yourself a lot of things about the music that when, once you step on a podium, you know exactly what's, what's going to go wrong, you know, uh, what needs fixing and everything. So I, it actually, is, it, uh, yeah, the past few months has been quite good for me in, in, in that sense. <laughs> Look, okay, can I just add on? Okay, I always felt very uh, passionate about this because um, when I look at Hong Kong and Taiwan, a lot of schools don't have tutors. In fact, a lot of kids have their own individual teachers and they develop their instrumental playing with their teachers. And I think, and I think uh, as we move on you know, in the Singaporean scene, is that a model we can, we can uh, adopt? And um, I, I look at so many of our YSC graduates, there are so many amazing, um, not just YSC, okay, even overseas people. So we have, uh, okay, I, don't, I don't want to name names, but so many of them and any one of them is going to make a difference in every kid's life. And so, so, and I don't think they charge a lot, you know, it's just like very minimal for every, for every hour. So, so why, uh, why don't we, we inculcate in a culture where our kids in secondary school start taking private lessons with these people because they are amazing. Uh, if I want to take a lesson from, okay, if you don't mind naming names like uh, Christian or Alan Khatib, 
I'm going to learn so much about horn. Okay, because that's how you talk about horn, right? <laughs> you can learn so much about horn and how to... Okay, Francis, to uh, 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 Alan, and uh, Alan, uh, you're going to have your first student. Francis is going to sign up tomorrow. Remember that? By the way, Alan and Chris are amazing teachers on the horn, okay? <laughs> and- Great, Chris, you got a new student too. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I've actually attended a, a, a masterclass by Alan and I was blown away. I said, I didn't know so much about horn. And come on, I studied music education, I studied pedagogy, and he actually gave me more information than I ever, ever learned. So I, I think, uh, I think we, we have very good people here. Um, and even if you take lessons from some of the senior people from the community events, you're going to learn so much, you know. So why don't we do that? Can we do that? Have proper lessons, and um, maybe Great. our menu will be different. I think, I think, I think uh, to wrap up this topic, this is really interesting because, um, I mean, we of course, uh, we really hope every single, like what Francis said, you know, every single individual instrumentalist, they really find a mentor and they find a teacher and they find someone that's good to help them, and then and, and that really, uh, I think that that really advances, you know, and you can actually learn properly. And of course, uh, like what a prom- what Elvin shared, you know, if really you don't have that, uh, some of the students really, uh, do, do they, they don't even have uh, their three meals, uh, they're, they're having difficulty with the three meals and all that. Then of course, you know, that, that really helped that, you know, the band director have to go and learn the instrument, like what Francis had volunteered himself, that he's wanted to learn from Alan about the French <laughs> horn, and I learned from Pan Tzu Wen, not Pan Tzu, learned from our dear uh, Christian. Pan Tzu Wen, yes. Pan Tzu Wen, Christian, yes, of course, uh, about the French horn. Uh, today seems to be a French horn topic, right? Okay, so uh, I think that that, that is at, at the same time very important. Uh, Adrian, you want to add something, Adrian? I, I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, this is a, this is a, a little PSA actually to all, all parents. Uh, parents, um, It's not only piano and violin. <laughs> music is not just piano and violin. Music Great music, you know, an orchestra in an orchestra we have such a big variety of instruments. I mean, think about the oboe, think about the bassoon, you know, different kinds of instruments. And and if you really want grades, you can go for grades as well. The the the, the time there are a few examination boards, you know, in town. That and but allow allow each individual to become a more proficient player, you know, instead of thinking of just taking it for fun. I mean, they can be, they, you can, I, I think I, I benefited a lot from lessons. You know, when I took lessons from David Wong, Mr. David Wong on trombone, I, and I became a better player. I enjoyed my, my, my time when I play in groups and I can play at a higher level. It's a vicious cycle. When you start to play better, you enjoy your time and, and playing in higher, higher groups and, and it just keeps going from there. If you don't enjoy playing your instrument, you don't you don't think you sound very good on it, you're not going to enjoy yourself. It's 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 you know it works both it works both ways. And and if students can think about maybe maybe think about investing a bit of time and you don't have to have weekly lessons. Nobody's asking you to have weekly lessons, bi weekly, even Monday, just to go to someone to check, am I doing things right? You know, am I am I am I on track? You know, I can go and practice the whole month and, and then I come back to you again for lesson. You don't have to think about weekly, week, like your weekly piano lessons and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, with, with that note, um, I, I think, I think uh, something that we all have to think about and uh, we have to share uh, as band directors of Singapore, you know, all of you here, you know, what do you think is band directing a stable job or career? Is it, is it a stable uh, job or career, you know, I mean, I mean, I think that that's a burning question, especially right now, you know, with COVID-19, with so many uh, things that's going on, I think it's very relevant. I mean, a lot of band directors now, uh, they are log on, they are listening to us, you know, they are, they are, they are hearing us uh, talk about comments about, you know, getting our students to do this, do that. Maybe, you know, from a perspective of yourself right now as a band director, what do you think? Do you think that is a really a stable career and maybe you want to give some positive and, you know, some facts that everybody should know? Elvin, <laughs> I saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have something to say. Actually, the question is, uh, I mean, the larger question is, is having a career in music or performing in Singapore is is that a viable career option? But Correct. honestly, you know, 
I think five months ago, we would have thought maybe no. But right now, the whole world, almost every industry is not a viable career option. Every industry is tumultuous. Everyone is from, from finance to, to engineering. Everything is affected. So I, I, I would honestly say that you, you can only make the best when you are fully convinced yourself. And when you are convinced, you will make, it's, it's like a do or die sort of thing. You will, you will make it happen. So in today's climate, I think every industry is equally safe or equally unsafe. <laughs> and I think the answer lies within yourself. You, you've got to decide for yourself that this is what you want and then you make it happen. Any more, any other comments? I think this is largely whether it's also about being a freelancer, you know, and and I must say at least the government now is putting a lot more emphasis on freelancers and we're thankful that, you know, NTUC set up Nika um, at this, before this, all this happened and and how, I mean, like, uh, like what Alvin said, you know, no one is spared from this thing. And whether we, whether how we survive through, I mean, in a typical time, you know, even as a freelancer, we always have to make sure we put our eggs in a few baskets as well. In maybe hopefully in a different industry as well, you know, we, we if, but at the end of the day is what do you envision yourself doing? Can you, can you do this for the next 10 years? Can you do this for the next 20 years? Is this something you want to do? Ask yourself this question. If this is something you want to do and you believe very passionately in, then do it. If you have question marks, I had question marks. When I graduate, when I was 20, 20, 21, when I was thinking, should I go into this line? I had question marks. So I didn't go into it. I only became more confident later at about 30 years. So then I decided to go into this because, and, and I was sure that, okay, I definitely want to do bank conducting. And that was when I, I went into it. Before that, I was not sure. So I don't go into it totally. I don't put, I don't get my both feet wet. Yeah. Francis, you want to add anything? Well, I'm just going to say that, uh, like what Alvin said, the world is going to be such a different place uh, after we come out of Corona, this COVID-19 thing. And um, that just shows us um, that nothing is stable. And but what is what is what is uh, the constant? What is real is uh, that we all need human connection, and that music is the thing that connects us as humans. And I think um, we just need to. I know. So for the young, the young people who wants to go into this, how much do you love music? How much do you love people? And you got to really love this music and people thing to to the max to survive this, to really have a, a long career in this. And, um, and if you really love this, then you can find yourself uh, crafting yourself new uh, jobs. Because I think jobs are going to be very different in the next 10 years, 15 years time, right? We can all agree on that. Uh, but what will not change is that all of us humans need that human connection. And we need to connect ourselves spiritually, um, our soul to connect, you know, I don't care, okay, okay, uh, you say you laugh at me now, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what? We will all agree that we when we listen to a Beethoven six. We are all different. Beethoven speaks to us differently, and Beethoven um, just make us better people in Beethoven six. So I think uh, we all just need to need to be that person, need to be the ambassador of music, classical music, of music. I reach out to people who are who are not in this, and and like like people like uh, like uh, Wilson or Adrian or uh, Alvin or even Brando, you know, been doing such wonderful things, you know, uh, advocating for band music and for music, and so many people's lives have been changed. And I think uh, why why don't we think about? I mean, I know stable is a very stable is not the 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 word here. But do you want a, a career that is exciting, that will change your life, and that will make you just a better person? <laughs> so I think it's yeah. I think band directing is 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 very attractive. 
in that sense. Maybe not monetarily as such, but um, it's I'm. I think many of our friends are quite envious of the jobs that, that, that we are. They might earn a lot more than we, we do, but I think they, they do, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that if you are do, dealing with music, usually the first thing is, oh, you are, you are doing what you really like, which I think is true. Okay. By the uh, way, second, can I just interrupt? Yep. None of these guys here earn little. <laughs> <laughs> Subjective. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, uh, but I, I think uh, I mean Francis. Francis' uh, speech is so inspirational. I, I I feel so sorry to to have to bring this in, but um, young band directors, please really take good care of yourselves. Not just now, but for your future, because mm-hmm. buy a good insurance plan because the government's not going to take care of you. You know, uh, and <laughs> you know, and when they ask no, you to put, the when they ask you to put money in your CPF and many say please do so, you know, uh, it's it's really really important. And then also having an insurance plan that 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 you know can can give you good dividends. I'm sure I'm sure Nika and, and BDA has, has has talked about this uh, over and over again. But I, it really shocks me, you know, to to see out there. I'm I mean I I I am fairly moderately saving, but you know when you earn a hundred dollars, don't spend a hundred dollars. Don't don't even spend eighty dollars. You know, put some money aside for the for the future because in a freelance kind of uh, economy, that's what you really need to do. So uh, I mean. Okay, I'm starting to say something more positive already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! I think that this 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 really you know, wraps up really well. I right? because um you know we ha- we have the positive part of it and then the factual part of it because I think that um you know as a uh, as people who are logging in to watch us you know they really also want to hear what is the, what are the facts. I mean I believe that a 25 years old band director will be a very different band director as compared to a 43 years old or someone who is in the 65 years old. So you know you you what Wilson what you are sharing is perfect and exactly what you know they need to. Do you know about you know earning hundred dollars and not spending you know hundred dollars or even eighty dollars like what you just shared? Thank you, great job. You know, and today, uh, to, today, today, uh, oh, Adrian, sorry, you wanted to say something. Sorry, yeah, I saw that. If I, no, no, if I can just add in a little bit, um, we, I just, I just told this to somebody that day. We, we must always see us because unlike working in a company, you know, in a company you can kind of see your track. You know how you're gonna how you're gonna go. But when you're a freelance, you can't see your track. You you make your own track, and we can only we can only prepare ourselves as much as possible. But not for today's job, it's for the tomorrow's jobs. Yeah. So, uh, even if you we are preparing ourselves now, we have to keep making ourselves better. We cannot we cannot stagnate because once we stagnate, we are we are we are going backwards already. If you're not on top of the game. We just need to keep pushing ourselves sometimes. Otherwise, yeah. On that can note, I, just, I think... Uh, uh, can I a bit? <laughs> yeah, sure. Francis, sure. Today, Francis is very active. I'm very happy for I that. I know, now. man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't want to say that... Um, that... I just, I just think that uh, whatever the, uh, you guys are doing here at BDA is wonderful. And I think you have... Uh, really try to touch lives and I think many lives will be touched and I'll just enjoy being a part of it and then Wilson and I'm sure that Elvin loved, loved uh, this whole process too. I just want to give kudos to th- these two amazing gentlemen, uh, President of BDA, Adrian and Vice President Brando and your whole team. Fantastic job on this two, uh, these two weekends. You know, I think we learned so much. I learned so much uh, and, and um, thank you for giving us an avenue to talk and share our experiences and I think uh, wow BDA is doing a fantastic job so if you're not a fan of BDA be one now <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Francis this was really good I mean uh, you know for 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 me hosting uh, two two master classes and uh, listening to a few master classes I think that they're all very common you know, a lot of our musicians actually speak about the same thing, like what you all shared, which is really good. You know, your passion needs to keep going to drive yourself to learn and drive yourself to enjoy what you are doing. You know, it's not about stability. It, once you choose music, it's really hard work. I remember what Ralph said, you know, at a clarinet session, if you choose music, you 
really you are ready for the hard work okay so that is something that you must put that in your mind for the rest of the time and uh, make sure that, that that is good and now if you do like our program for the past two weeks you know you know that we have done this on the two weekends all right if you really like it please remember to tag us on your ig i know that a lot of you are on instagram all right not many of you are on facebook uh, please tag us on ig and if you really like more of this uh, please scream it out to us and tell us that you know you want to do more so that you know wilson elvin adrian and francis can even share more you know and and really good about this and some one last question someone is asking is festival wins 2020 still going on this year <laughs> Be frank, none of us know as you can see covid 19 has created a situation where we are leading by the weeks we're leading by the days you know so uh we are very positive uh, we are hopefully that you know we hope that we can do it and uh, we hope that we could come all together to make music again. I think that is something that, you know, everyone want, wants to do. But, you know, at this moment, we can only say, let's observe and see. Stay home and be good. And, you know, if you do need to talk to any one of us, a lot of us on the social media, please do tag us. And if any of the questions are unanswered today, all right, we will try to go into social media on Facebook, comment and give you the answer. All right, with this, we would like to end the last session with everybody online with pros. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you, Francis. And thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Maestro. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.